of Final Cut Pro's controls are available from its menus. Notice how I take my mouse across a mile or so of display real estate to show the effects window. Ah, there. But you might like speed. In this introduction to the FCP interface and the next on editing, we're driving primarily from the keyboard. We'll get your fingers tap dancing. I've just installed FCP 7, part of Final Cut Studio 3. Let's trigger an insert edit with F9. And I get... Dashboard? I want to cut and I get a weather report. Has this ever happened to you? To prevent this, just access your system preferences, Expose and Spaces control panel, Expose pane, and disable all the F keys assigned there from the convenient pop-up menus. In addition, in OS 10.5 Leopard and later, look under the keyboard and mouse control panel. There's a Use F Keys as Standard Function Keys checkbox, and this should be checked. You're good to go. Constant mousing actually slows you down and can eventually damage your wrist. It's not as healthy as balancing the load between mouse and keyboard. With 450 default key commands and another 450 commands available for mapping, Final Cut Pro is one of those rare systems where you could execute an entire editing workflow from the keyboard, which I'm doing at high speed to show what's possible as you acquire your chops. In practice, FCP editors I know usually settle into 70% keyboard, 30% mouse. These keyboard tours are built around the Final Cut Pro 7 key guide from Focal Press. The key guide has been intricately designed to give you a bird's eye view of the entire default FCP key set inside a keyboard graphic. There's nothing else like it. Side 1 emphasizes tool access, playback, and basic edit commands. You'll notice two clusters of keys, subtly outlined, which are basic to editing. Here you've got essential navigation and marking. And here, track targeting and editing. They're on side 2 as well. These are a great place to start if you're new to Final Cut Pro. Watch me do a few tool changes from the keys. Try these yourself. Pause the video anytime to practice. Tap A for the Select tool, used everywhere. Here's a double tap tool key. First tap on Z gives you the Zoom In tool, used in Timeline, Canvas, and Viewer. Two taps gives you the Zoom Out tool. How about the only tool with five personalities? Tap on T to select one track forward from the cursor. A double tap on T to select one track backwards from the cursor. Triple tap on T to select a whole track. Four taps on T to select all tracks forward from cursor. Five taps on T for all tracks backward from cursor. And that's way faster than accessing the tool palette with the mouse. There's no need for a sixth tap to select all tracks both ways. That's simply Command A, Select All, a basic Macintosh shortcut. Tool icons on the key guide easily help you find over two dozen tool changes. You won't find them in the menus. Finding a shortcut this way helps you imprint it. For many of these commands, you'll never return to the mouse. When you're ready, Side 2 introduces advanced shortcuts in color, one for each modifier key. You're probably already familiar with the Command modifier key on the Mac. If you're coming from Windows, it's like using the Control key. The Mac Control key originally enabled contextual menus with single button mice, which Windows users always access by right click, and today so do Mac users. Control in modern Macs allows an additional layer of keyboard function. Here's the FCP key guide color layout. The top shortcut, if available, is listed in black and requires no extra key press just like side one. But below, each shortcut is color-coded. Red is for shift, always second down. Green, control, always in the middle. Blue, option. And orange, always at the bottom, a command key shortcut. You'll also see additional commands on the side flap with more than one color. These combo keys work the same way. Press whatever colors are shown with the indicated key to trigger the shortcut. More keyboard magic. Window control and navigation works best from the keyboard, and it's powerful. Watch this. I rest my thumb on the left command key. My fingers can move anywhere in the left region, where basic window commands live. Command 1, there's the viewer for your clips. Command 2, the canvas, which shows your sequence. A handy shortcut, a surface tap on Q cycles between these two. Try it. The title bar of each window gets brighter when active. 
Command 3, the timeline, where you edit your sequence. If your loaded sequence accidentally disappears, reopen the window with Command 3. Command 4, your project browser, where all your bins and clips live. I use bins a lot. When I open my bins, they clutter the display. But I can pin my bins to the tab bar. I select a bin folder by tapping Tab, and then up-down arrows to select my bin. Then I just tap Option Enter, and there it is in the tab bar. I'll do one more I want tabbed. There. Now, do I have to go up there with the mouse to open each? Not. I hold down Command with Shift, and tap a square bracket key. I travel from tab to tab on each tab. Try it. Avid users will be reminded of super bin mode, but this is maybe a little less confusing because you can always see the hidden bins as tabs, along with the entire browser items list as a tab. Use the tab travelers in any of the four main windows. Command 5. Remember this one with the mouse? I just opened the effects window in a fraction of mouse time. Sometimes I want to dismiss a window. Just tap Command W. Several zoom tools are available. Here are two special zoomers just for the timeline. I'll keep focus on the viewer. Watch what they do. Option minus zooms out the timeline. Each tap on minus widens the view and shrinks the sequence. Option plus zooms you all the way in to the size of one frame, even if the timeline is inactive. Very cool. And new to FCP7 are two new zoomers. Zoom in to playhead and timeline, and zoom out to playhead and timeline. But they're not on the keys yet. They're unmapped. I want them. Because normally a zoom will respond to any clip selected, while you may want to zoom into the playhead instead. Before FCP7, you had to deselect everything to zoom to the playhead. Let's map it right now. A look at the key guide instantly reveals available command slots you can map to. Here's a great candidate, the Y key. Except for option, it's open. Alphabetically, it's next to Z, and the word playhead has Y in it. A nice mnemonic. I'll map the zoom in to playhead command to shift Y. I call up the customizable keyboard with option H. I click the lock to make changes. Click the shift tab to set the stage. Now in the search field, I type zoom, and all the zoom commands appear. There's the new one I want. I just drag it over to the Y key. That's it. It's mapped to shift. Dismiss with Command W. Let's try it in the timeline. First I select a clip, but move the playhead somewhere else. Now, shift Y. Yep, works like a charm. Ignores the selected clip. Very handy. In the next show, part of a typical edit workflow, and mostly from the keyboard, with some time-saving power keys for mouse work. I'm Lauren Miller for Keys to Speed. Thanks for watching. Right, mama, 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 I said, can you?